Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to day five of these brilliant RWF World Championships here inside this magnificent Khalifa International Stadium. I'm Ewan Thomas. I'm your infield host as ever. I'm joined for the pre-show by the brilliant Michelle Summit. And Michelle, last night, yet again, I'm going to say to you the words, wow, because we saw so many great performances. It was absolutely incredible. It was probably the loudest it's been so far. The Ethiopian fans were amazing. The Ugandan fans were out of this world. And I think we just had an absolutely stormer of a night yesterday. I know we're going to talk to Catherine and Jeff later about what's coming up, but let me tell you, lots of finals. It is going to be brilliant. As you said, the middle distance, the crowd last night was superb. And in fact, we've got you, the middle distance distance medley. Take a look at the action from last night. And she's over. Beatrice Cetkovic, the fastest woman in the world, becomes the world champion here in Doha. Keep an eye on the clock. She's inside nine minutes. 8.57, 85, Emma Coburn and Krauser of Germany has come through to take the bronze ahead of Yavi of Bahrain. Cetkovic from Coburn, from Krauser. What a finishing prospect. Jakob's got to hang on because Ahmed of Canada's gone past him. Mukhtar Idris from nowhere with no form at all is going to successfully defend his title. It's a 1-2 in glorious fashion for Ethiopia. Borrega takes the silver and what an incredible bronze medal for Mohamed Ahmed of Canada. And it's a glorious 1-2. And here comes Nakai. Raven Rogers is storming through as well. It's going to be Nakai for Uganda. Raven Rogers will take the silver. And RJ Wilson has to sell for the bronze. The US weight must go on. It's glory for Uganda. Halima Nakai, the winning time, 158.05. She is the world champion. And also, when you come to these championships, if you're one of the lucky three, the hard-working three, who do get up there on that beautiful podium, getting a medal, that can be a special moment indeed. And I sneaked in yesterday to the green room of the medal ceremony, and I caught up with Christian Taylor and Dina Asher-Smith. Two, two people I can button to. All I was say, come on. All I was saying is, this is a room you want to be because if you're in this room, you've clearly got a medal. And for you, it was a four-time gold. Again, I noticed that you're in the comfy chair, Christian. In your name, you're meant to be over there somewhere. Is this the Lord's chair? Is it? Is this where you're just living at large? I feel like I'm on the throne. Um, but really, even she talked to Shelly four times. She says she's following me. I think it's vice versa. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of greatness in this room. I get to be next to Dina, who I don't even run a race after last night. Um, they remove him, but this is a place to be. And Dina, I've got to ask you, because obviously you had the silver last night. You've just had the heats of the 200. So you can't relax too much because you've only got half the job done. No, I definitely can't relax. Not even half the job. I've still got the relay as well. So, um, yeah, I can't relax. Definitely still in the middle of going through the motions, going through the rounds, but I can definitely celebrate last night. Has it sunk in yet? British record last night. Glo I think it's the first time in 36 years a woman's got a medal at this global event. Is that right? I mean, you're, you're, you are. You're the golden girl of the British team. Silver today. <laughs> but um, thank you. Yeah, it hasn't sunk in yet, but I don't want it to. Like, I'm just going to ride through the championships, hopefully go on to achieve some... Um, fab things in the two as well and then we can kind of like review and sum it up but once the week is over someone in this room who was very relaxed and i've no doubt the proudest person in the room i'm going to embarrass her julie over there this is dina's mum you're in the room about to watch your brilliant daughter receive her world silver medal how proud are you i think i speak for all parents really to watch a child who you take to every sort sporting event you can and they achieve their potential and they still have fun. So I'm immensely proud, yeah. And the nation is so proud. I mean, I just said to her, she really is the golden girl of our team at the moment. And only 50% of the job done. I like that because I spoke to you and John, a coach, last night. And you were excited, but you said, hang on, she's still got the 200 metres to go yet. And um, you, you're, you're keeping her very grounded, aren't you? Well, she's got some very talented athletes to compete against. She's got high goals, but we'll see what happens. Not a bad room to be in, though, is it? Well done for bringing up such a brilliant athlete and a lovely girl as well. I mean, that's what it's all about. The hard work that goes into winning medals. It's not just the athletes you see here. It's the coaches. It's the families. It's the amount of people who make their sacrifices in order to get the best out of their athletes. Do you know what? I'm very old, but I would love to take a seat. I might not be getting a medal, but I deserve a cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Tony. Cheers.
what an amazing place to catch up with the athletes. Look how relaxed they were, how chilled. And speaking of athletes, someone who's spent quite a bit of time on podiums herself is my next guest. We've got multi-world champion, Olympic champion, 10 years as the world number one in the 400 meters, Sanya Richards-Ross with us. We do have <laughs> A little highlights reel from you before we actually start talking to you. Welcome, Sanya. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you guys so much for having me. Sanya Richards taking it steadier than we've seen in previous major championships. She's got Sharika Williams outsider. Out in lane number five is making her move as well. Sanya Richards and Kriva Shatka. Richards comes away in the home straight. She has the advantage. Can she hang on this time? It looks as though she can at the moment. Sanya Richards is finally going to nail her first global crown. She's absolutely delighted. 49 seconds. All those years when it all went wrong in Helsinki and Beijing, it counts for nothing because now Sanya Richards is the world champion. OMG, still gives me chills to see that. Absolutely. And <laughs> when you look back on that race, 2009 world title, what yeah. emotions are still coming through your mind there? Oh my goodness. My career doesn't seem like that long ago. Um, and it just reminds me of everything that the athletes are going through here. You train so hard, you want it so badly. And when you cross that finish line first, it's all worth it. And we just mentioned you were on the top of the world for 10 years straight. Yeah. How tough is it in an event like 400 meters? Oh my goodness, it's so difficult. It's so easy when you're chasing someone else, but when now the target is on your back, it's so hard to stay motivated, to stay healthy, and to be able to carry that burden of being the favorite every time you step on the track. So very grateful I had a really good team, great coaches, uh, my physical therapist, everyone on my team invested so much in my success, and I'm really grateful for them. And looking at the t-shirt you're wearing, you're actually here in a different capacity now, yes. not as an active athlete anymore, yes. but with NBC Sports. Yes. How are you finding that? I absolutely love it. It's just such an honor to be able to continue contributing to my sport in this way. I didn't want to walk completely away, and now I get to give the behind the scenes of what athletes are experiencing and kind of be a voice for the athletes in front of the camera. So it's been a lot of fun. I have great colleagues, Otto Bolden and Craig Masbach, Lee Diffie, they're all so awesome, and Lou Johnson. So so it's just a fantastic opportunity for me. And of course, we have the women's 400 meter semifinals yeah. tonight. When you see those ladies, the likes of Shawnee Miller Weibo, yeah. are you glad you've retired or would you be <laughs> like to racing them? No, I would love to be in the field with Shawnee Miller and, Sal and Salwa. They're competing so well. Sharika Jackson and Shakima Wimbley of Team USA. I loved, com I loved competing. I loved being out here. So I absolutely miss it. And I wish I still had the opportunity to be out here running. Shawnee Miller Weibo will run really fast here. So that I know that would have pushed me to run fast. I love great competition but since I'm out I get to be a cheerleader and analyze how they're running and I'm excited about that as well and what do you think former athletes or like yourself can add to a broadcast that maybe someone who hasn't experienced going through a championship like other people yeah. uh, can add to that yeah, I mean, I think that's what people love about my commentary whenever they reach out to me is that I'm able to share what it's like to be in the village, what it's like to be training for this, what it's like to be standing on the track with the bright lights on you and having all these expectations for yourself and also the country having all these expectations of you as well. So I try to put myself back in that place every time I'm on camera and give as much insight to the audience as I can. Now, if you were a betting woman, who would you have your money on for the women's 400 meters? Uh, you know, uh, there are two ladies, I think, that are heads and shoulders above everyone else, and it is Shawnee miller Weibo and Sawa E. Nasser. Um, but Sharika Jackson is right there, and Shakima Wimbley, I think, will be in the mix. But it's really hard to bet against Shawnee miller Weibo at this point after running under 22 seconds at 200 meters. That makes her so dangerous. Great. So I believe my colleague Ewan is over somewhere down the home straight with the two voices that are leading us very much through the competition. Ewan, can you talk us through what's happening tonight? I certainly can. I've got to say from one 400 great to another. Jeff, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to talk to Catherine. Catherine, in, ter <laughs> in terms of the action tonight, I mean, first of all, last night, the atmosphere inside here, it was electric. It was brilliant. For me, everything is building nicely. But for you, what's the pick of the action tonight? 
You're right. Last night was, was pretty special. We had some wonderful action and tonight's no different. We've got four finals in total. Um, for me, I'm calling one on the track and one in the field. So we've got the men's pole vault final, our first major championships for so many years without Renault Lavillenie, but his brothers made the final, so there will be a Lavillenie representation. How do you think that works, Catherine? Because I was talking to Renault and, and, and obviously he's not here and his brother is. Obviously brotherly love, he wants to see him do well, but around the dinner table, do you think there might be a little <laughs> bit of you weren't even there? And look, I made the final. No, I think Renault will just say six metres and 16, and it'll probably be a quite a short conversation, but <laughs> they get on very well, of course they do, they're close, and Renault is so supportive of Valentin as well. So he'll be in the stadium supporting, but it will be great because Sam Kendricks is six metres and six this season, the world leader. It's gonna be a wonderful competition. And on the track at the end of the evening, we've got half a lap of the men's 200 metres. Oh my gosh, we've had some wonderful performances so far. What can Noah Lyles do? Will he have the title handed to him because he's that good? Will Adam Jamelia of Great Britain and Northern Ireland be in the mix? Andre de Grasse back in great form, wonderful to see by the way. So we've got lots to look forward to on the track and in the field as usual every single day. And from one silver fox to another, the oh. silver hair, it's a bit of a surprise maybe tonight <laughs> for Lyle, what, what he is doing there. But it's quite interesting, isn't it? He believes the comic hero is going to give him extra power. Yes, and funnily enough, Mr. Jedward, I am down with the kids on this one. It's a Japanese comic book story, and the character that he follows, when they achieve superpower status, their hair goes silver. So expect Lyles to be with silver hair tonight. So that, mean, so that means you're in the prime of your life then, I'm Jeff? absolutely peak mint condition. Thank you, Jedward. Yes, Sam. <laughs> uh, ask me a question now. OK, a sensible question. So um, obviously, middle distance is, that's your bread and butter, that's your background. Great atmosphere last night. We saw that in those races. For you tonight, what, what's the race you're looking forward to calling? Because, of course, as ever, you two are the voices behind the action. Well, we had three Americans in the women's 800-meter final yesterday, and they came away with two medals, albeit not the big G. We've got three Americans plus an NCAA champion for Puerto Rico in the uh, men's final tonight. And there are some American pundits saying we could sweep this. I doubt it, but we've not had that before. In the field, we've not had too much silverware, goldware or bronzeware for Germany yet. Husong has a chance there, but she's up against Spitakova, uh, the defending champion. And we've also got the Chinese athlete who's thrown furthest in the world this year. So great uh, javelin competition as well. And Jeff, you mentioned the 800 meter final. It has been become known as the two lap sprint. It's very interesting, the different outlooks of how people either take it out and stay at the front or they stay at the back, but try and keep out of trouble. Tactics are a massive thing when it comes to a final of a championship. You're not looking necessarily for a fast time. You just want to win. No, but I've asked about this because in America, it's run as an extended sprint. So very often you get from high school through college and professional ranks, Americans that run from the gun. And we've seen that a little bit here. We've seen it in other places. That could be a feature of today because it's happened in some of the qualifying rounds. Uh, Wesley Vasquez front ran. The wheels nearly came off. He was mown down by the lactic sniper in the home straight, almost treading water across the line, but he qualified and it worked and he could go for that again. It's an exciting prospect. Do you know what, Catherine? It never fails to make me laugh. The lactic sniper. <laughs> now, for those who have run and don't get lactic acid, they won't understand that. But if you've ever done a 400 like me and Kath, when you get hit, you get hit hard. It hurts. It does. I think I've still got some lactic in the back of my left hamstring from Sydney 2000. So it never, it never goes away. But Jeff's right. You know, championship running is about the medals. It's not about the times. And, and it depends what you are as an athlete as well. How many athletes do we see that we say they've gone out hard because that's what they always do. They're, they're familiar. They have their tactics and the way they run but it's going to be exciting tonight, you and we're making history every day. OK, well, I'm going to put you both slightly on the spot. If we look on the big screen, we can have a schedule this evening. Pick one out of all of that. I mean, what an evening. Catherine, I'll start with you. What's going to be the most exciting race for you looking at that? I've mentioned the men's pole vault, but let's not forget we've got the men's high jump qualifying at 10 to 5 here this evening. And Mutaz Essabar Shim, the Qatari athlete, who's obviously one of the best high jumpers of all time. He's been struggling with injury, but he's back here in his own backyard. And that, that men's 200 metre final and the semi finals of the women's 200 are, is, is going to be good. For you, Jeff, obviously I've only left you with the last three events to choose, but what do you think? Well, everybody knows now that we have the whole uh, projection mapping, the laser show that precedes the final event of the day. That's, a, that's an occasion on it its own right but that men's 800 meter final i think one or two of the headlines from tonight maybe sneaked around the world from the men's eight final 
Not in, only in how the medals are allocated, but how it's run. Somebody will go for this. Well, for me, the favourite race of the evening is seeing Jeff try and get up those five flights of stairs in an hour. That's how long it takes him. Guys, have a great time in the commentary booth. Can't wait to hear from you. Michelle, for now, back to you. Thank you, Ewan. I would love to see Jeff run up those stairs. Cat, Jeff, have a great night. Now, we heard from Dina Asher-Smith there before the medal ceremony, but of course the lady that won gold in that 100-meter final was Shelley Ann Fraser-Price, and I believe that Ewan went to catch up with her just before she received that medal yesterday. So, Shelley Ann, all the hard work has been done at this stage, obviously your world champion again. What's this feel like? You're about to get your gold medal. What's going through your mind? I'm excited. I just can't wait to actually stand on top of the podium. It's just an accomplishment that, you know, I hope and I dream that every athlete has that, you know, that moment because it never gets old and it's something that you live, you know, you live, uh, live through again and again. Because a lot of people obviously watch track and field and they think, oh, that was a good performance. They don't realize the amount of the months and years and blood, sweat and tears you go through in training for these moments. It's all worth it, isn't it? It's definitely worth it. You know, when you look back and you see, the, you know, you remember all the hard work, the tears, the nights you couldn't sleep because you were tired. And just to be able to top it off with becoming world champion or not even world champion, but having a silver medal or a bronze medal, you know, it sets you apart. You talk about sleepless nights. I've got a new baby myself. Are we looking at a future sprint king here? Maybe, but I, I, he likes football as well. But, you know, he dabbles in the sprinting a bit. But whatever he chooses, I'm sure he'll be very fantastic at it. Well, once again, congratulations on your gold medal. It's a joy to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a real privilege when I get to chat to the athletes, especially when you find them in, in the relaxed state. The work for her has been done. She's got the gold medal once again. And what a really nice person. And you can see how much it means to her and how hard she worked. In fact, we can remind ourselves when we look at the big screen just how well she executed that race. The women's 100 metres world championship final. It's a clean start, there's a roar from the crowd. Shelly Ann Fraser-Price gets a good start. Dina Asher-Smith going well. Fraser-Price is going to get there. What a performance. Fraser-Price and it's silver for Dina Asher-Smith. Another gold. Her legacy as one of the all-time greats is surely complete. She's the world champion once again. You may have seen them floating about during these championships. The trucks that do a lot of work for the officials. They pick up the javelins, the hammers and so forth. They are very quick. Have a look at this. So, Robert, these vehicles we have here, they look absolutely beautiful. But if I was to go to the shop and try and purchase one, impossible. They're specially made for, for these championships. Exactly. That, um, these cars are made especially for these kind of competitions. And in terms of speed, if this was on a road and it wasn't ca carrying a javelin or a shot, but how fast could it go? Uh, the, the speed depends on different uh, situations, like the weight of the item. It is uh, on it, like the hammer is more uh, heavy than the javelin. And it depends on the surface, you know, the same over the grass that, than over the truck, for example. And it depends as well how high is the grass and many different things, wet, not wet. Okay, so perfect conditions, yeah. no weight on it. Me racing the car, yeah. who wins? Uh, the car, for sure. Every time? Every time. Well, we're talking 100 kilometers an hour, 50 kilometers an hour? Yeah, probably between 80, 100 uh, kilometers an hour, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really fast. And for the officials here at the World Championships, this makes their job easier. They don't have to walk a long way to get the javelin. You can just sit there with your control. Exactly. Yeah, imagine uh, if they need to go ra uh, walking to take the item from the 80 um, meters, for example, from the cage, instead of driving with a car. To me, this looks like your job is a fun job, but I'm assuming you have to be very well behaved. You have to just drive in a straight line. You cannot have fun with the crowd, no? Uh, no, yeah. Actually, it's not my job because uh, my job is to take care of the cars. Uh, we work for Mondo, the official supplier of the cars, and uh, we had to train the drivers here, local people, uh, on how to use them. So you're saying if the car breaks down, it's your fault? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> but you said you were looking after it. <laughs> I, I had to look after them, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, well done to all of you and your team because you do a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Robert said in that video, these are not your average remote control cars. These are very quick. In fact, I'm going to try and illustrate how quick they are. Let me meet everyone in this race. Hello, what's your name? 
He doesn't really speak much, but in all seriousness, Robert, if we take out the javelins, this is not going to be safe for the race, but you are going to take on the truck. What is your name? My name is Osama. Osama, are you feeling confident? Yes, I will going to be, inshallah. Do you know how fast this can go? No, but... D don't ask. Okay. <laughs> What's your name, my friend? My name is Musa. Musa, are you, are you a fast runner? Yes. Can you run 100 kilometers an hour? Yes. Oh, <laughs> very good. We shall soon find out. And you? Uh, Ahmed? Ahmed, yes. You, to me, you look like the man who could win this race. My, my, I, think, I think you could do it. Are you confident? No, yes, I am confident. Okay, well, we're, we're going to step back and we're going to try to illustrate just how fast this truck is. So, on your marks, set, go! Well, at the moment, the boys are very quick. Look at the truck coming through. <laughs> oh, good night! Oh! I'm sorry, but even Mr. Usain Bolt, if he came out of retirement, he would have no chance against that. I tell you, before the end of the week, I would love to see my colleague, Michelle, try that. Michelle, over to you. Try and beat that. Brilliant, Ewan. I would love to have a go on that. Not quite sure about the javelins. That seems a bit like a safety hazard, maybe. But other than that, that seems uh, quite something. Now. The one other thing that we saw yesterday that we haven't talked about yet was the amazing high jump competition that played out. Two women cleared two meters and four. Maria Lasitskina, who ended up with a gold medal, attempted to await, which is just out of this world. And then, of course, Vashtai Kahnemingham won bronze in two meters. There was a world under 20 record. And let's just take a quick look at how that played out. Lasitskina, the first to attempt 204. Oh, and she does it! Is Mahu kick. And here she goes. And she gets it! Mariah Latinskaya, it was 2.04 to claim the gold. What an absolutely fantastic scorecard. An unblemished record until she tried the 208. Had a look at what played out on the track and in the field, but there's also been some highlights on social media. We compiled a whole selection of them for you guys and put them all together in our 60 seconds of social. That's my guess who impression. That was the Viking last night. What a race we finished with, the 400 hurdles final. There were three athletes going into that on paper who could win it. But Carsten Varholm, when he gets it right, the lights are on him at the beginning. He was pumped up, he was banging his chest. What a race that was. Let's remind ourselves. So rarely in life do three all-time greats converge in the same era. They have tonight, and it might, just might, take a world record to win it. This is the men's 400 metres World Championship final. Three of the four fastest in history, and it's Vahon with the edge from Benjamin. McMaster on the inside running well. Vahon's beginning to tire. Benjamin is trying to close. Watch the clock. It's going to be fast. Carsten Varholm defends the title. 47-44. It was sensational. Not a world record, but a performance of real heart, of real guts, of real courage. His is a name we will remember for generations to come. He's only the fourth man to successfully defend this title. 
What an absolutely incredible race. Such a mature race from him as well. You can tell he's got the experience and still really, really impressive watching that back. What I love is his celebrations, obviously, but it's almost like the, the, it's like the Maori chant. It's, it's the war cry beforehand, the way he pumps himself up, the hacker. If I was racing against someone like that, I would literally be like, oh, hello, Mr. Warhome. How? Because he's so pumped up. I think he's got the mental strength. I honestly think if it's in a dogfight where two people are really close, I think he's got the mental strength always to win. I really do. Well, and I think we have to give an extra shout out to his coach life as well. Without him, nothing would be possible. He's over 60. He still runs alongside him in training and really Really special shout out to the pair for that second world title. It certainly was a brilliant night's nice action last night and don't worry you may have not been here last night but you're here for tonight and I promise you day five is going to be superb. Have an absolutely brilliant evening from us for now. Good night.